Dan is tall. I will claim that I've never felt as helpless as the day I saw my cousin go to war. You see, I stood in line with him till they took his ticket to the airport gate. I turned and I gave him a hug and held on tight, stolen a piece of him to keep in my memory. See, we stood in this line before when he went to boot camp. A group of us all saying, don't change, and promising to write, all pretending it was just like another football camp, another harmless training session with game that was going to earn him a scholarship and pay for his future. You see, Matt wanted to be a dancer. He wanted to grace Broadway stage with faces of the moon acted out by the rise and fall of hands. He wanted to show those not blessed with hearing ears what music looks like. And those of us who still believe in God pray that his future won't make his past pay for its decisions. That this airport line won't be our last for past moments gassing past nights as if he were just going to dissipate and float away. And my vocal cords almost find the words to somehow plead with him. Just, just stay. But I know that my words do not override those of his commanding officers. So now in a parody of dance, man is moving to the beat of empty pulses, the rhythm of trigger fingers, and the tempo of torn arteries as he is crawling through the torn homeland of another country sand. I am drawn to those similarities. A proud son of Samoa, the group of native islands annexed off in a coral of world wars, split down the middle to the landmass which the bag of marbles auctioned off between two greedy kids on an elementary school playground. And now off he goes to fight for the one of two that still withholds independence, the United States. And in the clouds of dust floating past blood flecked mouths moaning, he's wondering how he got there. The recruiting office had promised him an education, never had posters of shattered skulls or frozen screams. But then again, Matt always was just a little hasty. High school graduate straight into boot camp, boot camp graduate straight into marriage, but I don't see how marriage fits into his new job. Don't see how the two vows he must make will mix one to his woman until death do us part, and one to Uncle Sam until parting deal us death. And now I'm the ring bearer carrying him 16 clips on a blood soaked pillow. Who we'll witness a union in the shadow of mortar cells? And I know they may not actually use mortar shells anymore, but the soul of this war is old, and no nicknames for death may change, and shadow stays the same. And I still don't get how choreographing a dance concert qualifies him to shoot a bullet. I don't think militant Iraqis will care how many touchdowns he scored in high school, and I don't care how many camps you take training from. It still doesn't prepare anyone for sowing the seed of demons sent upon a family whose only crime was being born in the wrong time zone. And while my mind asks why my memory wanders back to a book that I once read, and it stated that some of the Asian martial arts forms were developed out of a practice of going through motions, mimicking and praising the earth around us morning and evening. These were called prayer forms, and when I imagined them, I saw them as dance. And now in honor of my cousin Matt, I find myself praying with the dancer's palate, my body. So in the mornings, I pray to the morning sun that he might see another. I pot and pray in the hopes that piles he drives over won't contain landmines. I turn my pliés into pleas of the trees that have branches too slender to support snipers. I pray, and I pray. And I pray until my body collapses in straining spasm, forcing me to revert back to prayer forms of the tongue. Matt, Scott, Camille, McCoy, with teeth folding knee and tongue bent in humility. I'm praying for every soldier I have never met. Their names are my mantra, my ears I can't see. I'm unloading this spotlight shotgun up to the sky on the off chance there is a guy to catch a loose round of this prayer. And I swear, Jehovah, Jehovah, or anyone else out there, just grant me this and I will be your Moses of this new millennium. Just let me leave my people out of this desert to learn the unbelievable. No more by our hands, you see my people grow very evading in sin-stained skin, thinking about their babies back home who straight out of this womb are already at birth, beginning the first form of prayer, crying while I am still talking, pleading, praying for salvation.